Hello everybody, thanks for joining me on another episode of Thrones Beard. And today, I'm going to be reviewing Peter and the Star Catchers, Peter and the Shadow Thieves, and Peter and the Secret of Rundu. Okay, let's start off this review with Peter and the Star Catchers. And before I get into the review, I just want to let you guys know that um, I'm going to refrain from spoilers for the most part, and I'm just going to do the most vague summary of the book possible, just so, you know, you're intrigued to read it, but you don't really know exactly what's going to happen. And if there are going to be any spoilers, I'll let you know. Okay, so Peter and the Star Catchers. Now, Peter and the Star Catchers, I do have to confess, um, I actually didn't read this book the first time around. And what I mean by that is I read about 200 pages and stopped reading the book. And a couple weeks later, I came back to it and finished reading it. And what I found was about the first 200 pages, the book is exceptionally slow. And then it picks up pace exponentially as it goes through the book. So overall, I rate this book 8 out of 10. Mostly because of the pacing of the book. Uh at the beginning. Now, Peter and the Shadow Thieves. Now, Peter and the Shadow Thieves is actually my least favorite book I've read so far out of the Peter and the Starcatcher series. Um, and I'd say this is mostly because of, well, two reasons. The first one, without getting into spoilers, is Molly is... How do you want to put it? She is just constantly an annoyance in this book. So I'm not going to go into great detail about it, but read the book and, you know, find out for yourself why I think that. In addition, and this is a big spoiler, so um, skip this if you want to. So in the book, Molly's dad, Lord Astor, is returning star stuff. The largest quantity that star catchers have seen in centuries. And while he's returning this, his daughter and wife show up. Now, what you need to know about returning star stuff is it has to be done wearing gold armor or else you're going to die when returning it. So when his wife and daughter show up, they're most definitely going to die unless he closes this chest which would stop the star stuff from returning. Now, the reason he needs to return the star stuff is because, to put it vaguely, there's some bad guys who want to use the star stuff to take over the world. So if he doesn't return the star stuff, billions of lives will be jeopardized. Now, he decides to close the chest. And the reason that is ridiculous is because, let's say the chest is right here. And Lord Astor is just kind of standing right behind it, you know, with it open. He sees his wife and daughter, and, bef and just adjacent to them is this row of about ten bad guys with guns. And the moment that Lord Astor closes this chest, he will shoot them. So the reason it's ridiculous is because even once he lowers the chest, they're still going to die. So, overall, I rate this book 7.5 out of 10. Peter and the Secret of Rundoon. Now, this book is my favorite in the series so far because it really captures what I really enjoyed about the first book, Peter and the Star Catchers. The great pacing, especially near the end in this. This has phenomenal pacing. As in the second book, there is, you know, Molly is still kind of an annoyance. I, I find the first book is the one where Molly is the least annoying so far. So um, that's one of the perks of the first book. But I love this book because, you know, you've already read two books. So Peter and his friends are great friends and ends with, oh my goodness, I'm telling you, um, it is a ridiculous ending 
in a good way. I mean, it, it, he does a phenomenal job of just kind of captivating the audience with what's going to happen next. <clears throat> and uh, I cannot wait to read the fourth book. Well, thanks for watching, and God bless.